The love of food and health inspires the new cookbook, The Power of Five, Essential Foods for Optimum Health. A delicious, healthy cookbook. Well, most people think that's not possible. Author and doctor of preventive medicine, Michael Crupain, joins us now with more on the five food categories that support health and longevity. Plus, we're making a red lentil soup packed with flavor and powerful ingredients. I love this theory. It's not about depriving yourself. I look on the front of this cookbook, there's pasta, folks. And I'm like, yes, right. you still get to eat pasta. <laughs> you don't have to cut things out completely. That's the whole idea of this book. So I'm a preventive medicine doc, and my mission in life is to make the world a healthier and more delicious place. And people are confused about how they do that, right? I imagine you hear a lot, I can't. I can't do that. Yeah. And you're saying you can. That's right. People are always hearing the message, don't eat something. I'm saying eat more. I'm a doctor. I want everyone out there to eat more, and I want them to eat more of these power five foods. Okay, what are they? Fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. nuts and seeds, whole grains, beans, and fish. And they've been shown in study after study after study to be the foods that are associated with a longer, healthier life. The problem is we don't eat enough of them. Right. And, and in so many ways, when we eat some of the nutrients through food, it's better than if we take a supplement. It's like, you know, okay, I don't need the vitamin C supplement, the vitamin D supplement, if I'm having foods that are going to give it to me naturally. That's right, because foods are, have more than just what's in those supplements. They have all those things together, which is the powerful things that keep you healthy. And well, I wrote this book, let um, me just say, because, to eat these Power 5 foods so that people would know they're delicious, right? We don't eat them enough because we don't think they taste good. So I've created this roadmap. Right, we're looking it. at some of the beautiful dishes from the, uh, from the book right now. And you realize, you know, we do so often eat with our eyes, right? right? And you, I'm looking at these going, these are beautiful. There's the pasta. But it's got colors. And I think that's the other thing. A colorful meal, a colorful plate typically has very good things in it. That's right. And this soup that we're going to make today is all about the color. Mm -hmm. So it starts with... Red, or they look like yellow lentils. <laughs> lentils are one of the foods, they're beans, we need to eat more of them. Sure. And they're loaded with protein and fiber and folate, which is great for your nerves and your blood cells. And they're kind of the gateway bean, I think, because we don't eat enough beans, but they're easy to cook. They only take 15 minutes. You don't yeah. have to soak them. All right, and they what take have on you the done to those? Because those don't those look just, like the lentils that you, know, you would typically buy. Yeah, no, those are just lent dried lentils that have been boiled in water with some bay leaves, and they went from red to a little bit yellow, which okay. is part of the cool thing about this dish. Then what we're going to do is develop a really flavorful base for this soup. And it, so it starts with taking some olive oil, mm -hmm. and we're going to add some very colorful red peppers, some colorful carrots, and then two types of alliums or onions. So we've got red onions, and we have leeks, right? These are all really flavorful ingredients. We're going to cook them down for longer than we have time today for right. about 15 minutes. The idea is to get them soft and a little bit brown because when they develop that color, they're developing more flavor. Mm, okay. Okay. Then after that, we're going to add some ginger and garlic, and we're going to cook that for just about a minute until we really start smelling the flavor of the right. garlic and the onion. Yeah, uh, you put that in later, of course, out. because the garlic always, you know, will burn if you put it in too early. That's right. And then what we want to do is we want to add some spices. Mm -hmm. So we've got some smoked paprika and some cumin and coriander. So we dump those in and we'll, we'll kind of toast them if we had more right. time. Sure. Bring out more flavor. And then the secret ingredient is cinnamon, a cinnamon stick. Oh. It adds a really great uh, warmth and comforting element to this dish, right? It reminds me of being a kid, cinnamon, right? Interesting. Yeah, I just wouldn't picture it in this soup, yeah, but I bet it makes it taste great. Yeah, it adds a bit of a s sweetness without having any sugar. Sure, oh, right? there we go, that's a key. Yeah, and then when that's all done, we'll add some uh, tomato paste mm -hmm. and we'll cook that down. When you cook tomatoes, you bring out the lycopene, which is great uh, antioxidant. Yes. But also, more importantly, it adds a lot of flavor. So you cook your tomato paste down and then add some water. Mm -hmm. And then you've created this really thick and delicious flavorful broth with all these spices and all these aromatic ingredients. Right, all and right. And you do the trick of this dish, is you put it in a blender mm -hmm. and you blend it up for a couple of minutes to make a really, really smooth puree. Right, okay. And so now you have this ultra smooth, flavorful puree, and you do that for two reasons. Number one, it looks beautiful, right? It's this bright orange yes. color, now you want to eat it. And number two, it's now creamy and, and luxurious without having added any dairy. Ah, very good. So we'll take this puree and we'll add it to our pot. You can really see it's just this just, just bright orange. You yes. want to just eat it just like that, really. It looks beautiful. And then you add in your lentils. And you can just stir that around. And you cook that for about 10 minutes, 5, 10 minutes, until it really uh, is merged together. Mm -hmm. right? And taste it, of course, 
for seasoning, add some salt, add some pepper as you need it. What do you feel about salt? I mean, you know, obviously too much is not good, but how much is too much? I mean, if we were going to make this and we say it needs some salt, would you put a pinch in? A lot of times chefs have a whole handful and yeah. they're throwing it in there. Well, I think with this particular recipe, because we've added so many spices and flavors, mm -hmm. it doesn't need all that much salt, but okay. I think salt is what really brings out flavor in food. Yes, okay. A lot of the times we get a lot of salt from ultra processed foods, packaged right. foods, right? When you control it yourself, you can, you know, use less or use the right amount. Right, right? but still use and it, still you're use saying. It. Okay. And, and, you know, our bodies are pretty good at re getting rid of salt. So some people are sensitive to salt, then they need to be careful. Sure. But for most of us, a little bit of salt, not a big deal. So I also added some water in there to loosen it up. Mm -hmm. You want to kind of play with that. Yeah, I usually put three cups of water in this soup, but if it's too thick, you add a little more. If it's not thick enough, uh, right, just go slowly with that and yeah. figure out the perfect consistency. Exactly, and then when it's all done, you can plate it up. And I like to top it off with a little bit of rose harissa. Harissa is a spicy chili paste from, right. from Northern Africa. Yes. It adds yet another layer of flavor and a little bit of spice. A little bit of cilantro or parsley or whatever your favorite herb is. If you don't like harissa, you could just drizzle some delicious olive oil on top. Sure, yeah. And again, you've got this luscious creamy, delicious yes. soup filled with power And you're foods. serving it with a little bread, but yes. clearly must be... Whole wheat sourdough would whole be the grain, best. Right? Yeah, and no, okay. what's really cool there, if you, when you combine those two things, lentils are high in protein, mm -hmm. but they don't have all the amino acids, right? They're not a complete protein like you might find in meat, but when you add whole wheat bread, it's now a complete protein meal. I love it. And then what looks like lasagna, but that's eggplant. We've got some, you know, another salad there. So many great recipes. You don't have to deprive yourself. You can check out the book, The Power Five, Essential Foods for Optimum Health. Anywhere books are sold online, you can find drcrupain.com. We're going to have the recipe that we made today. Do you want to make it for this weekend? WGNTV.com slash midday. Thank you so much. It's such a great message. Thank you.